<laughs> I know what the pronouns, I'm not sure what the face is going to be, but um, I'm hoping that comes in. Right? I can't believe this, because the key of our policy is that we're not seeing is primarily alpha. And that's, my son was drinking three beers a day on alcohol that is in the first Yet there's no restrictions. And there's such a minute amount in there small already. Yeah. But yeah, there's so many regulations that we're going to have to follow. It really stumped me. We kind of made that formulation before you can see that it's not like kids who have seizures and they would let us sell it. Should I hear you guys can take credit cards now? Uh, we can take debit cards now as of uh, uh, three days ago. Yeah, we are finally able to get in touch with the bank. A uh, representative from the bank came in and saw how we did things. It was very professional. And they agreed to take a chance and let us uh, have an account there. It was really nice. How many employees do you have? Right now there is four. So we have two um, pharmacists that are, they're not full time, they just come with the, the main pharmacist group right there. And then myself, I'm just patient care representative. We have a security guard and then another patient care representative. So is there a network of, of um, folks that provide this network together. I guess my basic question is, what is, what is your company doing on the legislative side trying to drive this with the money that you're making from the people that are going to your organization and spending money? How much are you turning that back into a legislative agenda? That's a good question. And I'm really not sure exactly what we should be That's a really good question. I wish I knew. And we need to know this kind of stuff. This oh, yeah. Exactly what we're talking about. These guys are great, but how much are you helping them to help raise the awareness? And that's exactly kind of why I'm here today, is to try to get the word out. The track, they don't really give you a lot of answers. You can call the Department of Health, and it's frustrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Transparency no, is poor. I'm saying go to the companies and find out what are you doing with your financial to help raise the awareness on the legislative agenda. Yeah, because until we break through the legislative, the legislative barrier, this is all about being held hostage by the state. Oh, if I may answer your question, so, uh, the ROs are not legally permitted to do much more than simply dispense the product within the state law. Well, they're not even actually allowed to put up so much as a sign outside of their, their well, window. They're very, right. they can't they're very advise. restricted. They can't, they can't say discounts. It, they're so rich, and it's laid out in the regulations what they can and can't do. Because we do have discounts. They 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 offer discounts. <laughs> they offer discounts. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the way they get out is talking to uh, like my organization. Yeah, it's our uh, so uh, like, like the Cody, like WMY Normal, this is how we actually get a chance to let people know that Pharmacanus and Bloomfield and the doctors who prescribe them do exist. Because right now, Pharmacanus and Bloomfield and the other ROs, Etain and the rest of them, cannot legally advertise. They can't say, this is where you get your medical cannabis. So it's word of mouth and anecdotal. Um, <laughs> this, is not an this is the purpose for our meeting tonight. Facebook. I mean, they do have websites and Facebook. Yes, but uh, in, in most other highly regulated states, and so out of these, you know, like this, different centers, you may have your know, one to twenty, and they might have one to twenty, but you might need two to ten. But no one in those has it. That's how they're going to learn that this is a good product to use and yes. add more to it. Yes, yeah, so and most dispensaries. They want me to start with a 20 to 1, which is 20 parts THC and 1 part CBD, then a 1 to 1, which is equal parts THC and CBD, and then a 1 to 20. So on the other end of the spectrum, a high CBD product. Right. And then we have two in the middle of that as well. And But the possibility is endless, really, for, yeah. to each person in there. So and when will we get to that level? Is that what we're working towards? Exactly. Is in your in your in my, company's yes. mindset, that's what they're working towards yeah. is different tinctures and different exactly. ratios. Okay. So right now, we only have tinctures and vaporizers, but capsules are in the works. We should probably have those. So our feedback is Huge. essential. Oh yeah, yeah. That's basically a, we need all the feedback. And it makes get. a difference. Oh, right? it, it yeah, really yeah. does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I see people every day that come in that they just look terrible. Coming in two weeks later, you know, they're still hurting, and then all of a 
I'll see someone that I think they're going to walk her a month later, they're going to just keep yeah. the same number of people get off their own medication and they're just going to see the same number. It's really amazing to see it. Yeah, yeah. What else do we do? I really think it's very amazing to get August 1 plan to help treat some pain and pain. I mean, one ratio may be helping someone with their pain yeah. and make yeah. some more procedures in the same ratio. Really interesting. Yeah. Everything is customized dosing. It's not something you can say, oh, this is the one dose that's going to work for everybody. Yeah. I wonder if you have multiple issues that it could benefit, and then you have, if you have to choose which condition you want to work with. That's the benefit of going to see a doctor. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, wonder if that doctor, you need to see the neurologist, and then you need to see this doctor. A lot of it also, again, it's like you. Like Wendy was saying, you know, she's got, you know, so, uh, one thing works better for her IBS, one works for better for pain, one works better for my neuropathic pain, and something else is a little bit better. But the thing is, over time, you also have to realize that you're sort of filling your body with cannabinoids. And that's, that's so okay. there's 30 odd cannabinoids we know of. So you reach a balance, and that's, and a lot of what we, we know about the cannabinoid system now is, it's a moderating function. This, this system we have is here to try to keep things in balance. And we have explored how to manipulate that system. This is the way to manipulate that system. We don't have the data, which is so important for the medical community because we have theories of how it works, but until we have 10,000 patients, 20,000 patients, right. then the medical community will say, oh, maybe this is you know, appropriate. And then you can have, you know, your, your theories turn into, you know, true practice. Right. And that's the hard part. Because the doctor's like, well, it sounds good on paper, but, you know, they can say, I talked to this person and it never worked for them. So, and other people say it worked great. Right. And we need, not to need science. We need to have clear, conducted trials and patients tracked so you can do a medical write up so that we can publish and tell the entire world that this actually doesn't work. So well, that's it, it, the doctors. Everybody needs to ask their doctor why they're not having someone in their office refer them for a certain patient. I mean, every single doctor can be a referring doctor to this program. Every single doctor's office can have a PA that can get registered to certify their patients to this system. So we need more voices you know, to ask, harass the hell out of them. Why are you not certifying people in the system? Because there's just there's not enough doctors. Dent cannabis clinic is getting like bombarded. They have like a list of marijuana people that are trying to get in there. And they have to follow the rules and everything. But we need more doctors to certify the patients to get in the system so you know we can get the huge ball rolling that it needs to be in New York. We don't even have a thousand doctors and fourteen thousand patients across New York State today. For those for those indications. Any no, doctor, no, 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 but the doctor does have to certify first. Yeah, they have to take the four hour course. It's not a big deal. Some of the doctors have said, I don't want to pay the two hundred twenty five dollars to take the course. That was the worst thing. If I did this, are you so ridiculous? I'm sure he's been angry. So you see one thing balance. I don't know what Right. I've actually hit my point where. You know, lunacy versus practicality. It makes you nuts. You know, if I focused on being angry all the time, something would suffer. And I, I'm playing their game. You know, the state's going after money, so now I'm trying to figure out how can we help patients and make them money. So it's not, you know, a couple of years ago, Governor Cuomo wanted nothing to do with recreation. Now I'm hearing he may actually have a pay Why? Yeah, Do you know, I, I read the other day that Colorado had $72 trillion in tax revenue from the sale of, of marijuana. And last year, it topped $1.2 billion. They have so much tax revenue coming in, like they gave it to the decision back to their taxpayers, whether they wanted to refund it. Like everybody could have gotten a refund. They hit a theoretical ceiling, they never thought they it back. But they actually, the taxpayers go and so roll it back into the system. So right now they're getting brand new roads, brand new educational systems. It's going into all the um, education, you know, 
It's a 55% tax right now on products. So it's 22.5% at the growing facility, 225 at the expensive facility, 5% at Department of Justice, and 5% for education. So 55% right off the bat where it goes to the state. How, how much of how much of a concern is there about pushing this with the uh, with your our federal people? Because the doctors I've heard of are afraid if they prescribe this, the DEA may step in and pull their license to uh, prescribe narcotics. So shouldn't we also be pressing people in Washington? Oh yeah. We're in national. What are the I, I'd like to answer that question as best I can. How many people have um, killed their husbands mm -hmm. being on academies? What are the side effects? Mm -hmm. Anecdotally. The, the mm -hmm. biggest side effects, effects that we see are maybe a little bit of grogginess, <coughs> sometimes a little bit of euphoria. That's why you got to kind of find two years. But no, no side effects, no negative? There can be some side effects. You have paranoia. You have too much for this. Yeah. Most patients tell me after a day or two of being on it, they, they don't really get that euphoric feeling. And they're fine to go on and they still wear it. So they work, they take care of their kids, they don't, they don't really get that psychoactive effect. Right? My side effects were reduction in seizures, reduction in vomiting, reduction in inflammation, 10 pounds of water weight loss. This all benefited which started for seizures. But my pulmonologist that saw my kids was like, I can't believe you like this now. My gastroenterologist said, oh my God, you're not vomiting as much, so that means you're not having aspiration. We're not in the hospital. I have not come wood. It's been several years since I had to admit them. So the side effects are there, but can depend on what strain you're taking and what doses you're taking. THC is going to cause the euphoria, but it can also cause laxity, so you could potentially, you know, aspirate vomit, but it also helps you to prevent vomiting. Um, you could fall down and hurt yourself you know, because it's going to change reality if you take too much of it. Cannabidiol is not psychoactive. Um, if you take too much of it too fast, it can actually cause seizures if you're prone to it. So it's very important that you dose slowly and make adjustments every two to three weeks and talk to your doctor and not self-medicate. Because if you don't talk to your doctor, you may think you're helping by pushing up a dose, but it actually may cause more problems. So Have any of your children's doctors flipped to be believers now? Um, Dr. Kasema that I saw, um, I was involved right from the beginning. He like, I don't know if it's going to work. And my children were cannabis naive, never had it before, we never got them out of state. So they took a really big interest in my kids. And um, next time we saw him, he goes, this isn't the same child I saw a couple months ago. At six months, he's like, this is the best decision we ever made. And a pulmonologist, he was astonished 